Love to Hate, the podcast that asks the question, what do you love to hate? You are a smelly pirate hooker. Movies, television, music, books, nerd things, current events. And I hate your ass face. Do you love it? No. No. Hell no. No. Do you hate it? Yes. You stupid, ignorant, son of a bitch, dumb bastard. I'm charting your gender direction. No, no, no. No more foreplay. Love to Hate starts now. I am Brandon Luna. And I'm Philip Fullman. And this is Love to Hate. And what are we going to uh, love and or hate on today, Brandon? MP3s. MP3s? Yeah. How do you hate on an MP3? I'm not a fan. No. No. I mean, you can walk around with the entire music library of your favorite artist right there in your pocket. And the liner notes are on Google. No, you don't. And then you can tell everybody how great it is on Facebook. What's not to love about MP3s? I think they sound like shit, number one. So you're an audiophile. Yeah, I'm an audiophile. Okay. So I, I don't like the way they sound, number one. Because and of the compression? Com- because of the compression. And I don't like the fact that it's changed music. That that it has. I, I It has changed music. Let, I, I, let's stick on the uh, the compression. How do you listen to your music? Um, so Head, headphones. Primarily in the car. Okay. But even in the car. Now, I've, I've done this. I've tested this. You get a MP3 version of the sound of this particular music that you're listening to. You get the CD and you put it in your car. CD always sounds better because you can hear more of the instrumentation. Yes, you get more of a wider range of sound. It's just an overall better sound. I think with MP3s, the compression you kill some of the high end, you kill some of the low end. You're getting mostly mid range, and you're losing a lot of that oomph that you get from music. Certain kinds of music, rock and roll is a big one for me. Sure, um, jazz, any kind of jazz, or yeah. uh, you know, even like funk music from like Prince and stuff. You know, it definitely sounds better on the CD. Than so it pop, does. it doesn't really matter. No, not necessarily. I think, but yeah, it's a love hate relationship with me for MP3s because I love having all that music on my phone. I love right. the compactness of it and everything, but it just feels like it cut the soul right out of music. You know, to me. No, it, it, I, I'm with you. I mean, you, I can tell the difference between listening to a Sinatra CD. And, you know, then listening to that same CD on my iPod, uh-huh. you know, you're just, you're missing a lot. It's, you're right. It's not as rich, but there's that convenience factor. Now, though, you, you prefer the sound on the CD. Yeah. Which what is about again? those guys that would be like, hey, man, you're <laughs> yeah. missing a lot because on the album. Yeah. Oh, no. I was that everything. guy, too. I was that guy, too. I, I'm kind of a techno nerd in that I, I tend to go back to the analog over digital. Right. Um, I loved albums. I mean, I loved listening to records, and I thought they sounded great. I've come into albums late. I think growing up, um, my mom had a killer uh, turntable. It was a fantastic turntable. Crap speakers, which I quickly blew um, listening to my music. But I never really had a great turntable with great speakers. So I never... Well, I take it back. When I worked in radio, then it was just like, wow, okay, this sounds fantastic. But, you know, I'm dealing with high-end speakers, high-end turntables. But at the house, it was just, man, I'm just getting more hiss than anything. I'm not really getting the volume out of it. And now I've got the little, you know, self-contained turntable. But now I'm enjoying some of that hiss and stuff from it. But I really wish I, I had a system where I could just listen to the album yeah. as it was meant to be heard. Um because you're I, right, you you pick up so much on there that you don't on the CD. Yeah, even I held on to an old, like this thing was a piece of furniture. It was an old Sansui amp. Mm-hmm. that was a glass tube amp. I held on to that thing probably well into the '90s, and that was where I listened to my music. I had my turntable hooked up to it, I had a cassette deck hooked up to it, I had my CD player hooked up to it. I had great speakers, and that's where I listened to my music. Music's a big thing for me. I mean, I yeah. I live and breathe music. I I wasn't. I played instruments at some point. I don't now, but. I mean, I was, that was a big part of me. I would listen to music when I was writing, listen to music when I was doing stuff around the house. If you ever come to my house on the weekends, there's music on. It's just a big part of who I am. And for me not to have it sound as good as I think it could sound, that's a downfall for me. I mean, we have a convenience factor of, we have this thing called Alexa, the Amazon Echo deal. Yeah. It plays music out of it and stuff. I don't use it because I think it sounds like crap, you know? Yeah, it, it, you're dealing with one small speaker. Yeah, that's trying to spread sound everywhere. You well, know? It's, I think when you went to the bookshelf mm-hmm. uh, stereo, you know, it's like, look, you can put three discs in it and two cassettes, and it's got a radio. And it's like, all right, you know, yeah. and it's, but it sounds just as good. I had a big rack system. 
yeah as 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 a kid and even then the turntable wasn't fantastic compared to you know some of the other turntables but you got a lot better sound mm-hmm. out of that and it was like man that 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 little shelf system isn't going to carry you know near the sound and now I don't have a stereo in here you know I've got my iPod and I've got the little docking bay yep so yeah that kills me i mean i it, yeah. you know, i can say that too you get home i've got the sound bar <laughs> for yeah. the tv because tv speakers now suck and um that's where i listen to most of my music because that actually produces a decent sound it's got the bass sure. and everything but that's still not good I, enough yeah i wish really? i listened to more music i don't listen to as much as i wish i did i don't just come home and put on music maybe i need to maybe that can be my moment is in while i'm having a cigar yeah it's a good um, thing to do if you haven't done that in a while try it. yeah it's also good for writing. If you write anything, this is very true. Yeah, this is this is a good point. I used to put on movie soundtracks and write, write yeah, plays. Yeah, what was it? What was it? Okay, yeah, that, I, could, <laughs> I could see that because it's very epic and and that. I think for writing, I would it, me it was always like a jazz or Sinatra. Or yeah, somewhere some guys you know drinking a bunch of whiskey and <laughs> you know complaining some, about some yeah, dame. Some y- or, yeah, somebody. Or, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, some kind Davis. of blue by Miles Davis. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. That's fantastic. Just get a bottle of Jack Daniels and sit there and write. Exactly. Uh, that that works fantastic. And again, something that's going to sound better on a CD or an album than it would in MP3. Mm-hmm. I remember um, it, it was the '80s, and just what are these? What are these CDs? What are these? And the guy's like, "Hey, watch this!" And he takes the disc out of the player, tosses it across the room, and he goes, puts it back in. Still sounds fantastic. Yep. And he's like, yeah, I do that with a record. And to me, it was like, oh, my God, now I don't have to worry about scratching record because I lived in fear mm. of scratching them. And I was like, well, this is just going to change everything. This is fantastic. I was a nerd. I had, like, the, the you know, the cleaning cloth for the records. Oh, this, yeah. This big met, this big wooden, it looked like a big hand, like a you didn't You didn't have you the know? Mr. Vacuum? No. Or, or the record vacuum? <laughs> right. It looked yeah. like a hairbrush and yeah. you put this liquid on it and you went around your records with the groove and you cleaned it. And I had we, little... we had to do that at the radio station because yeah. when I started, we still played albums. I had to learn to cue them up so you didn't get that wah sound. Yeah. And yeah, cleaning them was a big part of it. I had the plastic sleeve for the album and then the plastic sleeve for the cover too. I was a total nerd about it. You but know, I you're was... supposed to take the plastic sleeve off the cover. No, I would put another one on top of it too. Oh, okay. So it wasn't the same. It wasn't the cello. No, no. You, that, you, that you're supposed to yeah, take that off. Yeah, that would warp your record. Exactly. I had separate cello that you could then label your record. Ooh. Ooh, like this is you know, jazz, and I give it two stars. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, the other thing that, <laughs> and to me, this is one of the things that you certainly lose with MP3s um, to a large extent with CDs, not as bad. Album art. Yeah. Man, I used to love going to record stores and just looking at album art because that was fantastic. Bad out of hell. Some of those the, the the artwork was amazing. And now you don't even get that. Nope. You just get like a little, you know, icon uh from the Apple store. Yep. And as you can see, I, it's around the corner. But I've got uh, uh Whipped Cream and Other Delights by Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass. Nice. I stared at that album so long as a kid. I'm like, I don't even know why. You know, it's like you don't know why you're attracted to it, but just like, I, I, I like this picture. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just staring at this picture, and you wouldn't get that. It's, yeah. and I've seen, you know, that out al- that that for sale as a CD. I'm looking, I'm like, it's eh. not near as yeah. awesome. I mean, it's still chick covered in whipped cream, but it's like, yeah. yeah. For me, it was Santana Abraxas because it had the black chick on the. Oh yeah. yeah, naked black chick with the huge boobs. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, and you had. Um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm probably doesn't matter with Rod Stewart where he's, you know, the picture of his butt. But yeah. I mean, there, you could do so much, <laughs> and, oh, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. and you go into the record store and you'd see the huge poster. And it's like, oh, that's awesome. And it's now like, what are we going to put up? Yeah. There's not even record stores. Really? No. There's, you know, the hipster record stores where and, and this is the weird thing, too. It's like for the longest time, you could pick up records at half price books for 25 cents a piece. Mm-hmm. Now they're $15 you know, for an old used record. God forbid you buy a new one because they do release a couple of LPs now and then. Oh but, yeah. Uh, yeah, half price has a section for new ones, and now yeah, twenty five bucks. And it's like, wait a minute, when CDs came out, they were thirty five. Yeah, and, have, they, and they came in the long a, box. I have kind of a funny story. This is and it's an embarrassing story too, but I'll tell it. So uh, it's probably what mine, makes it funny. A buddy of mine's a DJ, and um, 
Radio <laughs> disc jockey or like club disc no, jockey? No, club, club okay. disc jockey. Yeah, and he, does, he, uses, he still uses the albums and stuff. And um, I told him, I was like, yeah, I got a whole bunch of records. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with them. He's like, well, let me you see what you have. You know, I'll pick out the ones I want or whatever. So I gave him a couple boxes of uh, albums. And he's like, dude, what the hell were you listening to in the 80s? What's all this bullshit? It's like, you know, Howard Jones and like 15 different versions of one song from these like mixed tapes or whatever, the, you know, 12-inch versions or whatever of like, you know, Genesis songs and stuff. Yeah. It was just really pretty crappy. And I was like, I was like, well, yeah, I didn't give you the good stuff. I just gave you the stuff I didn't want anymore, you know? So he went and sold it to half price. And then I had a friend of mine, like two weeks later, text me. He's like, dude, he sent me a picture on the, on my iPhone. And it was Wham! Make It Big. And I had the plastic cover on it still. And it said Brandon Luna on it. And it had a date. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, is this you? I'm like, yeah, that's my record. He's like, I'm so glad you admitted to that. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I had, I had a, I forget how many boxes. I think I had three boxes full of LP, good size boxes full of LPs. And I had kept them with me. I didn't have a turntable, but I, I had kept them. And I had stuff that had been given to me. I had like Jimi Hendrix and the experience and not, not like, you know, greatest history. It was like the album, mm. um, like some original Eagles albums and then some cheesy crap from the eighties. Um, and I was living in a studio apartment. I hadn't had a turntable in years. And so I just, I kept moving them with me. And they sat in the back of this tiny closet. It's like, man, I'm never going to listen to these again. So I went down to a used record store in Kansas City and sold them for pennies. And now I kick myself yeah. for that. And and the way, part of the way I, I got, now the, the Jimi Hendrix album, that was from a family member. But some of the stuff I got, I was working at a radio station adult contemporary so you'd get some uh you know neil diamond little guy with celine i don't think celine dion was Air hot yet, but dan fogelberg <laughs> yeah. you get some you know some of that and um anyway uh my buddy was working the night shift just before the overnights i'm just up there hanging out because it's radio it's cool yeah he gets a call on the hotline and just uh-huh mm-hmm. it's the owner of the station calling him at the end of his shift He's just to power the station off. It's been sold, and and you know we're we're no longer a radio station, and uh, or no longer that format, and uh, it's now going to be a Spanish language talk station. Oh man! So of course he has to call everybody. Guy coming in is like, what? The, you know, I don't have a job, and so there was this huge record room, like a gigantic walk-in room. Lined with shelves. This had been a, a, a some form of rock contemporary station since the '60s. Mm-hmm. The music director comes in, unlocks the door because you locked it. Because we're disc jockeys, we're kind of skeevy. Yeah. And he says, "I'll be damned if they're going to get this and throw it in the trash." He goes, "Whatever you want." Ah. There's like eight people in there, and we're just like grabbing stacks and stacks. And it's like, what's this? It's shaped like a heart. Oh, it's Corey Hart. Yeah. You know, sunglasses. And it's like, I don't know. It's a heart shaped record. Yeah. All sorts of cool stuff. And it's just like, oh, man, just add your collection that way. And I gave them away. No. Oh. Basically. I, it's like, why did I? I should have. Because now I would love to have them. Yeah. See, I don't have a turntable anymore. I'd love to get a turntable and a good sound system. I just don't have it. It's one of those things you don't get to have when you're an adult and you have a family. Right. But I still have a lot of the old records. I have uh, a picture disc of the Star Wars uh, soundtrack. Oh, that's cool. Uh, you know, c 3 and R2-D2 on one side, Darth Vader on the other. And I've got uh, some original Beatles stuff that I got from my dad when he gave his collection away, basically. So I got the old Beatles LPs and some Led Zeppelin stuff and some other cool stuff. Uh, one that I always thought was really cool was a, a Harry Nelson record that it even said it on the... It still got the cellophane, or I think it had the little disc from the cellophane in the record. It's supposed to be like... This record is unbreakable, and you can sit there and bend it like edge to edge, and it won't break. It was really cool. Um, sounded like crap, but you know, it was just a neat idea for that particular. Record. Yeah, I, I think I remember those. Yeah, they they did them a lot as kids' records, and you actually had to push it out of the. And I still have my old forty-five book and records from the man. man. I oh, now those, those America one, yeah. Like oh, where he meet with the Falcon, and, and yep. he killed the oh man. I still See, got. I those. had those. Those those I lost in an earlier purge that that was mom induced. 
because I would have held on to those yeah. just yeah, and you had you could go through them. I had all the GI Joe yep. escape, you know, search for the mummy, escape I've from that. Yeah. something island. There was the one where he, you know, he finds the cobra while he's looking for the statue of Buddha. Yep, it's on the cover. Uh, Cobra's right. I've got yeah, that as well. Yeah. yeah. I've got those as I well. Loved, yeah. I, I loved all of those, and I could repeat them. Yep. You know, as a kid, you uh, from repeated listening. That's when I started to do the voices and stuff when I was a kid. I would listen to those and just, like, mimic the entire thing. There was there was one, and it had a scratch, and it was always he, the guy's telling Joe, prepare to parachute. And it was prepare to para, prepare to para, prepare to parachute. And I would mimic that. It was just... <laughs> The one, oh, this is a, uh, so we had, my mom had a whole bunch of Sinatra albums. And nice. uh, one of his Sinatra songs, I don't remember which song it is, but it ends with, and don't tell your mama or something at the end of the song. Mm. It's going to drive me nuts because I know which one you're talking about. But our yeah. album had a skip and it just said, your mama. <laughs> 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 and for the longest time, that's how I thought that song went. So I had to hear it somewhere else and just go, your mama. <laughs> and don't tell your mama. Yeah. I'm like, what the hell? Oh, Sinatra Live at the Sands. There you go. Is yeah. what it is. It's Sinatra Live at the Sands with Count Basie and Quincy Jones directing the orchestra. Nice. God, Nicely I, done, sir. Nicely thank you. done. Yeah. I, now, now I just got to figure but out what see, song it is. LPs. I mean, that was awesome. You had the whole yeah. thing of just the tactile version of it. You can look at it while you're listening to it. Uh, it sounded great. And it's a ritual because you've got to, you've got to set it down on there place the needle it's it's that's, it's the ritual that's what I, I that's part of what i miss about music now is there's no ritual to it now now it's just part of every day it's your phone it's your you're walking you're waiting in line you put some music on you're in a car you put some music on it's not it, it's it's dumbed down music to the point where it's also almost brought it back to like the 50s so back in those days it wasn't about an album it was about a single it was about let's yes. put out a hit single once yes. you've got enough hit singles, we'll put an album out, which is essentially just all the singles with a couple of crappy tracks, and that was your album. That thing you do by the yeah. wonders and the Oneaters, yeah, the Oneaters. So that's yeah. that's what it was, and it's almost it's back there now because really it definitely download individual songs that they want, and they make a track. But list you know what? In some way, in some ways, I'm okay with it because I I remember buying albums. It's like, man, this has got four good songs and a ton of filler. Yeah. And so now it's like, okay, I can get the songs on that album I like and skip the ones that are crap. But at the same time, because I, I take both sides on this issue, um, I remember buying the album for the hit and then flipping it over to the B side in song three. It's like, this is better than the hit. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, I, I love this song. And you, you know, just wear the grooves out on that. So yeah. you miss finding those, those gems that aren't radio ready. I think, I think that happened with, CDs is kind of really what perpetuated that because I think with the CDs you could skip tracks. Yeah, and I remember you know in or the shuffle. 80s, yeah, you could shuffle. I remember in the eighties being with friends and like, oh man, did you hear that new New Order song? It's great. I'm like, yeah, you have the CD already. You've had it for like six months. What are you talking about? I was like, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, look at your CD. You're like, oh really? You know, you just got to the point where you'd buy the CD and you listen to the one or two tracks that were right. on the radio and you didn't listen to the rest of it. You know, to be fair, I, that's I, I've never gotten past the first two tracks of the Outfield album. <laughs> yeah. I. Uh, that's that's all you need because the rest of it, yeah, yeah. But no, it's I probably wouldn't even know there. Could, and there could be something good on there. I just I I wouldn't know it. Yeah. But uh, I think in some ways it's good because it's like okay, you wrote one good song. Yeah. And now you're coming up with eight others to fill up space. Let's just go with the one good one for now yeah. because it it's kind of like writing, uh, especially with poetry. If you're going to do any type of collection. You can't just say, well, I've got this really good poem and here's some other stuff I wrote. It's like, man, all that stuff needs to be really good or something you're proud of. So it may take you three years to write that book. And in, in music time, you're dead. Yeah. You're no longer an artist. You're, you're a has-been. Mm -hmm. So you've got to continually pump new product so you do get a lot of filler. Yeah, true, true. But you know, now that you can do it with just the single... Yeah, I don't know, man. The romance is gone for me. I mean, I, I, I still like when I get a new CD or an MP3 or whatever, mm -hmm. like I still do buy stuff on iTunes. I will make the time to sit and listen to the whole thing while I'm doing something. Now, it might be while I'm surfing the Internet or whatever, but I'm still going to listen to it from start to finish. And I don't think a lot of people do that now. I think most people just they get the track they want and that's it. Yeah, and there's something lost in that. I mean, you're, I'm you're, probably the, I, and I'm probably that guy now, especially with new music, because it's like I don't know who this is. I just yeah. I heard this one song of theirs, and I liked it. 
So I bought it. I probably like their other stuff. Yeah. But I just, I haven't heard it. I think it. there's still artists out there that are doing albums, per yeah. se, that, you know, like I know um recent band that I picked up that I liked, um, I'm apparently the only person that likes this band in my household, but Manchester Orchestra, they do albums that have a beginning, middle, and end. It actually tells a story. Manchester Orchestra? Yeah, Manchester Orchestra. Not a lot of people have heard of them, but... They are no, because I, I went with Trans Siberian Orchestra and then I went with Manhattan Transfer. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. do you mean one of those? No, it's it's basically a combination of both those bands. They take, no, it's not. That <laughs> but I mean, that they, they have a story. Melissa their, Manchester. They have a story in their albums. And yeah. if you don't listen to the whole thing, you don't get it. And or if you don't listen to it in sequence. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So there's still people out there making that type of music. But I think because of the way we intake music now, it's kind of lost in but translation. But do people gravitate to that? Do do the people who like that type of music find it because they're in that circle, they're on those message boards, they're in those clubs, they find that music? Yeah, I think they and do. And then they call everybody else sellouts or whatever. Probably, probably. But, yeah. but they, they, they find it. Yeah. Um, because it exists. There's a hipster market for music where they do, you know, they are the ones buying the albums. They are the ones getting the, you know turntables and the sound systems yeah. and stuff. So I guess maybe I'm a hipster in heart as far as music's concerned. I but. Hipster gets a bad name. I think anytime it's... A, well, I think if it's like, okay, you, you know what? You're 19 years old and you know, you're trying to take on all this stuff. It's like, man, that doesn't have any meaning to you. Yeah. Because I look at a hipster and it's like, dude, I've always dressed that way my whole life. I'm just an old guy. I, I've always worn flannel shirts and jeans and chucks. And, yeah. You know, I grew up with turntables, so... It's like, I'm not trying to recapture anything. This is just who I've been. Now it's like, ooh, I like that. But I, I think it's cool anytime somebody younger finds a, a medium like that where it's like, oh, wow, I can appreciate the album. Now when it starts becoming, oh, I listen to it. I'm like, okay, anytime you become a snob about it, yeah. you lose me. But I think it's cool that they kind of rediscover it. Like when, when you meet somebody in their 20s and all of a sudden they're able to sit there and tell you that, oh, yeah, didn't Catherine Hepburn... Uh, wasn't she in a couple of movies uh, with with Cary Grant? And tells you the movies is like, all right, that's cool. Yeah, you have an appreciation for these things and don't just go, oh, it's black and white. It sucks. Mm. You have to appreciate it for the time it was done. You watch the original King Kong. You yeah. watch it now, you're like, that's kind of cheap. It's like you got to consider what they had at the time to work with. Exactly. It's amazing. So I, I can when somebody younger can can kind of grab some of that. I do appreciate it. I appreciate it when they can talk intelligently about it. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Not not when. Now I had a buddy uh, who got pissed off. It, it got early, uh, early '90s, and so the internet was still new and everything. Fifty six K, baby. Yeah. <laughs> and he we did find those online message boards, and yeah. he said, "This kid, these kids were sitting there talking about. Do you remember your first Beatles CD? He's like Beatles CD. What?" You little uh, bastard of a CD. It was an album. <laughs> right. You shouldn't even be. And I'm like, I'm not. Man, if the kid discovers the Beatles on CD and he likes the music, fantastic. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing One thing that CDs has given us because of the amount of space. Um, I know when they released a lot of, uh, re-released a lot of Beach Boys stuff, because there was room, they were able to put outtakes yeah, clips, true, stuff true. like that. Yeah. It's like this is fantastic because you wouldn't have it on an LP. Yeah, um, because like, well, where, where are we going to put this thirty seconds of them talking in the studio? So that was kind of cool. Yeah, that is cool. I think you know, medium has grown and it's grown along with the rest of our culture. Uh, we're very much a uh, consume it now. I need it now. I need it as fast as possible and and uh, as compact and and put away as possible so that it's not in my way. And that's fine, but I think for music, it it tends to kind of suck the soul out of what these artists are essentially trying to do. Now, there's a lot of I think there's artists and there's pop guys. You know, there's there's difference now. People who yeah. are making music to make money and people who are making music that actually means something. I think it's probably less of those now than there is America's Next American Idol. Yeah, exactly. That whole thing has really kind of perpetuated that type of music, and that's fine for that. You know, you're going to make one hit, you're going to not do an album. That's great, but for real music. I don't know, man. MP3 is just, it kind of kills it for me. I'd rather have it in a format that sounds better. I'm, and... I'm going to deviate a little bit. Okay. Um, re- referring to music and, and how the industry is now. The Buggles. Okay. Again, prophetic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Video killed the radio star. 
Mm-hmm. Because if you look at what it takes now to be popular, you've got to look good on video. I don't even know where they show videos anymore because MTV doesn't. They're showing things it's about some chick in a trailer getting Evo knocked up. And YouTube and yeah. and yeah, and and so it's very much about artist appearance. Yeah, and if you think back to Millie Vanilli. <laughs> okay. Now, I, I wasn't a fan of the music. Neither was I. But but definitely some people love the songs. And the whole reasoning behind it was nobody will buy it if it's two fat dudes and a chick. Yeah. Because they're not, none of the three of them are attractive enough to sell this album. But they liked the music. So... If you hadn't had video and you just put this out, maybe didn't put their picture on the album and you just heard it on radio, people would have bought it and liked the music. Yeah. But instead, they said, we've got to put somebody out there that people will want to look at. Mm-hmm. So now it's more so, oh, look, Jessica Simpson. I don't think she's a singer. I think she's auto-tuned. Yeah. But everybody enjoyed looking at her. Exactly, yeah. So so that's why you had it. And and go back and look at the albums. Go look at the back of the original Boston album. Uh, Those are not attractive men. Yeah. Our, and you cannot tell me Boston did not have groupies. Oh no. No. I mean our, But but they were not somebody would be like, hey, that guy's a pinup. It's like these these guys look like they might have just, you know, worked on my car or something like that, and they're in a band also. Yeah. But it didn't matter because you loved that album. Bon Jovi. Yeah. That was the shift for hair bands. So you had guys like Scorpions and Iron Maiden making music, and people loved that. Mm-hmm. Once the videos came out, Scorpions, those guys looked like they were 80 when they were doing songs in the 80s. You know, they were they were some old-looking, crusty dudes. Yeah. And then you got Bon Jovi coming out, and now everybody has to have big hair and the tease thing, and they have to be good-looking, and it, um, it changed the face of uh, rock. I mean, it went from, from you, rock and roll or hard rock or heavy metal to glam rock. Glam. Well, you had uh, uh, Great White. Yeah. White Snake, who were more blues-based rock, and all of a sudden it became more poppy. Yep. And, yep. Uh, you know, I I like White Snake. Yeah. You know, again, I know two of their songs. I've listened to the whole album. It's like, okay, I'll take two out of this one. Yeah. But, again, they were, and, and I saw some with David Coverdale, and the people saying, oh, you got popular because of your hair. He's like, yeah, we sold a lot of albums. It wasn't because of my hair. And they were popular before that. Exactly, yeah. And um, you you do. You kind of lose that now. Yeah, because it's got to be that certain look, and it it just kills it. And and maybe part of that hipster music or whatever, when you get guys like Mumford's and Mumford and Sons and such, is doesn't matter about the look. Yeah, you know, it's not about glam. It's just about let's just sit here and play some music, which is what I think it should be about. Yeah, you know, because it should it should really speak to you at a certain level. I mean, that's. Regardless of your mood, if you're happy, the music should go along with that mood. Mm -hmm. If you're sad, maybe you listen to happy music to cheer you up. Or maybe you want to listen to something that's equally sad so it mirrors your mood. But it's it's supposed to speak to you. Yeah. And now it's it's just churned out with no real thought behind it other than how much money can we make. What did you think of the Smiths? Did you think they were depressing or did you think they were... (laughs) I I always thought look at look at me what do you, you know me what do I you think I thought the Smiths were hilarious I mean I lyrically they got some really funny stuff going on that Morrissey's uh, solo stuff is also very funny yeah and people are like oh that's what you listen to when you're depressed them and the Cure I'm like no their their music's actually really happy if you listen to the lyrics I mean well I mean I think it depends on how you view happiness and yeah. how you kind of you know if you're able to get the tongue in cheek and uh, and all of that one of my favorite my, well and I love Sinatra but my favorite album is by a guy named Tony O'K, T O N I O K, and uh, it's called Romeo Unchained. Oddly released as a Christian album. Interesting. Okay. Even though he, 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 most of his stuff before that, none of it was uh, Christian. But they, whatever record deal they struck up. Yeah, Striper um, baby. <laughs> yeah, and and it, but it wasn't that. And there's no real mention. It's not a religious album. It's mostly about relationships. Um. But, you know, as you listen to it, people be like, that's sad. Like, this this is hitting me where I need it to. Mm. And and so I, I kind of get that because it's it's like, okay, not my favorite artist, but when when stuff goes down, it's like, that's the album that I'm going to want to listen to. And there's some things on there. 
uh, uh, where uh, um, one is co- he's talking about affairs and it's called Romeo Loves Jane. And he's talking about we're talking cross genre, cross, cross all this stuff. But it's like, OK, that works. So I see what you're saying about, you know, how you approach the Smiths of like, well, was it depressing or, you know, is it actually kind of happy? Mm-hmm. Um, I, Cause I'm like you, I can kind of take happiness out of a sad song and find beauty in it yeah. as opposed to somewhere. It's just like, uh, w- Oh God, what's that song? Everything is awesome. Yeah. Now, serious. I could listen to a Smith's album or the cure and not kill myself. Yeah, me too. But if I have to listen to everything is awesome, <laughs> I'm going to take my life. And that's that's not what the song's about. The song's about everything's being awesome. Yeah. But I'll be damned. I'm pretty miserable. Have you seen the movie? Yeah. It's actually kind of the opposite because the song is everything is awesome, but everything's not okay. You know. And, and I, I, I maybe a subject for another podcast. I don't get the whole Lego thing. I yeah. mean, I enjoyed them as a kid playing with them. They're still fantastic. They're eight thousand dollars now. And there's for a your Lego kid. Batman movie coming. Yes, and I don't, I don't get that whole thing or the video games. But just listening to that song, it's like this is so obnoxious. <laughs> yeah. It's like, this doesn't make me happy. Yep. That's like, for me, that was uh, 99 Luff Balloons in the night. I wanted to punch people every time I heard that song. The both versions? Either both version? versions, yeah. Both okay. versions, whatever. I How do you feel about Katrina and the Waves uh, walking on sunshine? It hits me at the wrong time. I'm going to want to punch babies. Yeah. See, it's, and the funny thing is, no matter how crappy my mood, that comes on. I'm kind of like, all right. I'm kind of like, all yeah. right. This is kind of, but I'm it, it, with it Man- doesn't. Manic it doesn't... Monday is that way for me. I'm okay with Manic Monday. Oh, that's a fun, happy song. If we were doing video, I could show you my Susanna Hoffs impersonation <laughs> um, in, in Walk Like an Egyptian. Uh, watch, you watch. Go. See, you'll appreciate this. You guys just just bear with us. So this is my my Susanna Hoffs impersonation. That was it. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. That scene where exactly, she, just, she yeah, just looks, she to, looks the side. to the side. And that like was it. That was, yeah. She does it better. Yeah. Sorry. No, she is, Yeah, she does. She's a no, gorgeous woman. Yeah. Um, yeah, Manic Monday, I, I'm trying to think if I liked it. I think I did. I didn't like Walk Like an Egyptian. Yeah. And then the fact when it comes on, some jackass in the room decides, hey, look what I'm like, stop. Yeah. Just stop. <laughs> um, you know, it was funny. I was talking to, to my buddy Joey, who is a musician, yeah. still plays gigs. And he's like, you know, everybody's coming up asking about Prince. You know, hey, play Prince song. And he goes, you know, it kind of gets irksome when all these people are like, man, I'm a huge Prince. I love Prince. It's like, you know, the five songs he released on radio. You don't know. You know, he's like, man, this guy's made music for 20 years. And here's this album that nobody heard of, didn't know it got put out, full of fantastic music. But you're like, hey, play Raspberry Beret. It's like, you're not a fan. Yeah. You're a you Fairweather know. fan. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's like kind of when people with Sinatra, they're like, oh, you know, it's like, what, you know, New York, New York. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't know any of the the other songs that he did. So it's like, yeah, yeah you know, are you a fan? Yeah. But it, I don't know. Music's kind of that universal thing that... Uh, it's very personal. I mean, that's the thing. It is. And I guess from my standpoint, um, it is very personal for me, and I, I enjoy music as a whole to be a a whole experience and for me with mp3s it's not the whole experience because you're not getting that tactile feel of holding in your hand you don't have the liner notes you don't have all these things liner notes that's huge i used to memorize them yeah exactly not not intentionally just through repeated yeah reading i miss that i miss that about music and it's not there anymore and i i feel like it's just we've become the radio generation again but now it's internet radio and everything else that goes along with yeah now i will say though that that's if i do listen to any new bands it's pretty much how I find them is either Pandora or iHeartRadio or something like I'm that. I'm the same. Where I'll go in and say, okay, I like this band. I'm going to play a radio station by that band, which is great. You couldn't do that in the, you know, when we were back in radio, it's like you had to play what you had to play and that was it. Yes. Now you can go and say, I want a Royal Blood station and they'll play Royal Blood, but then they'll also play five, six other bands that either they're inspired by or sound like them. And that's a good way to find new music for me. Yeah. You know, so I do that all the time. But um, and I probably wouldn't listen to half the music I did I do now if it wasn't for that type of thing. So there's something to be said for the the modern consumption of music. Yeah. But I think that the way that we're consuming it, I, I miss the tactile side of it. I, I really do. Well, I'm you know I'm the same with writing. I people are like oh you know you sit and type that like man that's my editing process. I've got to have like a tablet or a journal and a pen. And then even then, depending on my mood, it's like, that's not the right pen to write this. Yeah. Uh, because to me, writing is, it's the words flowing out of my hand and I, I have a disconnect with the keyboard. Mm. 
It's like it, this doesn't feel like I'm writing down anything. It's not personal. I'm not journaling it. Yeah. Um, cause the majority of the poems I wrote started out as, you know, it was me like writing a journal and then all of a sudden it's like, Oh, I guess that actually is, is, you know, kind of a poem. And so I still, I still have that. And if you take that away from me, it's like, man, it's hard to write. I can't write that way anymore because I can't read my own writing. No, <laughs> it's, it's so bad. I have pretty decent handwriting, <laughs> but you know, I mean, but a lot of the writing I do now is, you know, posting stuff on Facebook for whatever. Yeah. So I can do it. But if it's me telling a story like, no, I, I got to sit and write it and then type the damn thing up and bitch about it. But then I, you know, then I go through and that's when I start to edit. All right. So you're Which gonna, is tough. So what you're saying is you want to take hold of the uh, Twitter account. You're going to be the Twitter guy. I, I'm not a Twitter guy, man. No, I can do the face. I can do Facebook, tweet. man. You don't want me tweeting. <laughs> you're better at Twitter than I am. I barely I, tweet. I can do. I can do Facebook. I'm better at Facebook. Yeah, we need to get a Facebook page, I guess. Yeah, we do. So what is our Twitter page, sir? The Twitter page is at love the number two hate pod, and the uh, Gmail address, if you want to email us at Gmail, is love to hate podcast at gmail dot com. And it's love, T-O, hate, yes, correct. at gmail. Mm-hmm. Should have made that less confusing. Oh, well. Well, that's, you know. Yeah, These are people right. listening to us, Brandon. I mean, they're going to be <laughs> smart enough to suss this out or ask a question or something. Exactly. We're not dealing with just your regular schmo on the street. I hope not. These I are people who not. want, they value what we have to say. <laughs> and hopefully they get some laughs out of it, too, because obviously this is much different than what you or I have done on either of our previous oh, yeah. podcasts, because oh, yeah. now we're just... <laughs> <laughs> this is more like what it's like when you and I are just hanging out, smoking a cigar. Exactly. Um, still professional, but uh, yeah, we, we I don't know. We're a little more loose and just yeah, like you just pick yeah, a topic and go, man. Yeah, yeah just let it fly. That's kind of so, what I wanted to do with this. So just, hopefully, people will enjoy listening to us rant. I hope so. I hope so. So yeah, check it out there. Um, we're on iHeartRadio. We're on Spreaker and on YouTube. So All right, check us out. Fantastic. Thanks for stopping by, kids. See you next time. 